This is the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for Off the Press. We have Upunabon Kotaria, who's a public affairs analyst. He joins us in no time. Good morning, Upunabon Kotaria. It's good to have you join us. Good, good morning, Matthew. Good morning, Dustin. And good morning, Nigeria. Good morning to you. All right, we take a quick look at the Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, we'll start off with the Punch, and the attention would be on the top pages or top stories of our national dailies this morning. Uh, looking at the banner caption for the punch, she says, new national working committee, APC inaugurates appeal panel Tuesday, and PDP says Adamu has fraud charges. Co-contestants await refunds, Senate to declare Adamu's seat vacant. Transform APC ahead of 2023 polls, Bajabia Miller tells the uh, new National Working Committee. Now, PDP mocks ruling party says new chairman has corruption case. Uh, that's for the banner caption on the punch this morning. You still have more interesting caption here. Another says state government sinks deeper as NNPC plans 328 billion naira deduction in April. January, February fuel subsidy payment hits 430 billion. I mean, that's a lot. Uh, you also have federal government's borrowing from CBN rises by 96.54% and hits 18.16 trillion naira. We might probably just be talking figures this morning. And Nigerians spend $39.66 billion on foreign education medical tourism this is a report from the central bank of nigeria and still looking at the punch you also have another caption saying wiki declares presidency bid and knocks article saraki orders uh, this is uh, making the rounds it was also part of our top trending conversation lassa fever dead hits 123,000, and cdc worries over uh you know the increase of the lassa fever debt oau protests interference in varsity autonomy says asu oau protests interference in varsity autonomy says asu it's uh, another story let's quickly look at this airport invasion stop pampering terrorists okay state police afeni ferry tells the federal government and two detained suspects Excrete 165 wraps of cocaine, Australia, uh, China bound drugs uh, seized. Uh, these are some of the headlines you find here this morning on the Punch newspaper. Right away from the Punch, uh, up next is the Nation newspaper. The main story this morning uh, Buhari is saying APC now set for victory. Uh, with a story on um, the red strip just below that caption, uh, Nikon court orders committal uh, proceedings against uh, A. Amcon, MD, and others above the masthead. Southeast, okay, zoning of PDP ticket to the south. Uh, with the writer, WK joins presidential race. All right, just beside that story, how U.S. based RCCG pastor emerged song. Sanu Nasir begins strike. Uh, those are the stories you can find on the front page of the Nation newspaper this morning. Away from the Nation, we quickly take a look at the uh, leadership newspaper. Uh, for us, uh, the caption says, President Mohamed Buhari absolves Adamu, says ex-PDP members in APC have repented. <laughs> Interesting. 2023 Southeast PDP back Southern governors on zoning. Uh, that's what you find. New APC chairman still face trial over 15 billion hour fraud. That's what the PDP is quoted to say. I will be fair to all as national chairman. Adamu is quoted. Al Makura, Mustafa pledged support for new uh, national working committee. Uh, you also have Vice Chancellor seek virtual learning in varsities, and SEC raises concern over 170 billion naira on claimed dividends. Just before we move away from this, you find federal government committed to a better Nigeria job creation. The vice president is quoted on this, and the governor of River State, yes, some wicked declares for president in uh, Makadi. 
Governor seek $15 billion investment in Dubai. <laughs> really? Okay, experts have on fiscal discipline to stabilize uh, the Naira. These are some of the headlines you find on the leadership. All right, then to the independent, uh, daily independent, uh, inadequate revenue collection weakens Nigeria's debt profile. Analysts bemoan abnormally high debt service to revenue ratio. Just below the pictorial there, that's the APC National Convention on Saturday, 2020 presidential election, Jonathan gives presidency condition to join APC. Tinubu Group kicks against consensus presidential ticket. More stories on the front page of the Daily Independent. Wiki declares to contest for President vast to tackle in security. 2023 election, I'll ask Tinubu to step down for me. Okorocha is quoted on that one. Mobile selling assets without telling us is irresponsible, acquired by government. On the red strip below, I'm the kind of person Nigeria needs for President Peter Obi says. Nakaduna Airport attack, federal government has conceded sovereignty to terrorists that um, attributed to the People's Democratic Party, alleges Buhari, um, feeds while Nigeria burns. Renew your faith in APC, Adamu tells party faithful, uh, assures on reconciliation, open door administration, says APC-led federal government has surpassed previous administrations. Those are all of the stories you can find on the front page of the Daily Independent newspaper. All right, we're now being joined by Okunabon Kataria, who's a public affairs analyst. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us, Okunabon Kataria. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. All right, let's start off with the Punch newspaper this morning, looking at the top caption. It talks about the new National Working Committee. Of course, the APC had her convention on the 26th of March 2022 and uh, the APC inaugurates appeal panel Tuesday PDP says Adamo has fraud charges uh, that's a serious issue I mean uh, the issue of fraud some people say 15 billion uh, others are saying 14 billion but what are your thoughts on this one well um, the appeal panel is uh, in tandem with the electoral act when you have elections, you have conventions, of course, you set up panels where as these parties will go to testimony, they are doing that. That's why you have the, the appeal panel. Uh, but in this particular case, it's just going to be an, an academic exercise because uh, you have a consensus candidate. And what the other candidates are asking for is just the report. They want the report. A particular candidate uh, said he, he spent over 300 or 500 million naira campaigning for uh, support and uh, his body language obviously uh, showed that he wasn't really happy with his decision. It was I think they were coerced into uh, this consensus candidate matter by President Buhari. Uh, and it calls to worry, you know? I wonder why Buhari laws has not been shown for the electorate. Is you know, always asking at the last minute or be listened. If he had told them early enough that, look, I'm going to have a candidate, I'm going to present a candidate to the party, I don't think a lot of them would have gone ahead to campaign. Not doing so many goes around in the country, campaigning for support, would have spent so much money, and at the last minute, you now ask him to step down. That is very unfair, very undemocratic. But what will they do? And this will cause some level of disaffection. Those that have distribution will definitely either play anti party or leave the party for another party because they are really, really not happy. That, uh, yeah, they, not just because of Adamu, but because of this process, the way he met, the last minute imposition, it's more or less an imposition, the last minute imposition of Adamu on the party. A lot of people are definitely not happy with it. And this might cause some level of skidding in the party. I see a lot of them defecting in the next couple of weeks or a lot of them playing anti party Then on the issue of the charges, court charges, well, these are indictments 
but uh, is only found guilty when uh, uh, a court of law pronounces him guilty. For now, they are mere indictments, they are mere charges, uh, as they've been substantiated. That's another issue. But the APC is still the all these facts. I would have taken under advisement these facts and other variables before presenting at that. Probably he has this unique selling uh, 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 proposition, he has this ability. In their thinking, anyway, I don't know how, how true that is. I cannot attest to the veracity of that. But probably they have this belief that Adamu has what it takes to navigate the party to success in the 2023 election. It was probably based on that conclusion. Otherwise, the party is seized of all these allegations and many more that we'll, we'll be hearing uh, very soon because they are now in America. All right, as, as okay, the of the I don't want us don't want us to dwell on that um, ABC because we will um, delve into it much later uh, on the show. But let's talk about other issues that that, that sprang up uh, on the Punch uh, newspaper, or other stories as it is. You know, what are your thoughts uh, concerning uh, the River State Governor's um, intention? You know, uh, the Punch uh, captions it this way: uh, "Wiki declares um, presidency bid knocks Atiku Saraki and others." Why, why, why will you ask me that question? Smiling <laughs> just. <laughs> well, anyway, um, I don't have a problem with him in Mexico. I mean, it is his constitutional right to buy for any office in the country. Unless there is an infraction, you know, that will probably uh, prohibit him from, from uh, contesting. And that is his constitutional right. But if you ask me of Nabi Kutari, should we say be allowed to be president of this country? I'll tell you no, and it is something why. Why no? I want to explain. I want to explain because uh, he's been a governor for about seven years and his rule is draconian. You know, mm. you for you to be a president, there must be some level of decorum in your speech, in your conduct, and whatever you do. It takes a lot to be a leader. A man that is in pleasure to criticize things, my dear brother. I can tell you that one day, plus TV might be a victim. He will shut it down. If you criticize it, he will shut it down. Um, really, River State was invaded by his uh, uh, cronies because they were making some statements that they felt were uh, advanced to his, his uh, 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 how would I put it, uh, interest, so to speak. So, if you talk of a man, he doesn't have that that charisma, he doesn't have that candle to be the president of this country. If a Buhari who was the military head of state could contain, could brook certain expectations, even Jonathan Cole, my dear Enrique Emerson, my dear brother, I have told you, but you might go have to be one of the first victims. And I don't think we have one. Mm. No, but but um, at, at this point in time, you know, with the issue, because usually you have a lot of people saying, you know, the electorate would be the one to decide. And so all of that decision should be taken, should be done. I said, Mercy, I said, if you have to. Okay, okay. And I okay. gave you my reason. It, it, it's fantastic. I know, I know, Mercy will vote for him. Justin will vote for him. <laughs> Let's move away from that now quickly. Uh, we're still, still staying with the Punch newspaper. I mean, quite interesting issues. Maybe we're delving to the issue of uh, food. So uh, there's this report saying that bread prices may go up. And for those who are actually a uh, great fan or, I mean, who really enjoy eating bread, it might just be difficult for them now because the bakers are lamenting that uh, forex and energy issues are really affected. And so the cost of bread might just be on the high. I wonder how much a loaf of bread would actually go for at this point in time. So, what is the question? Because uh, it's normal, the prices of things go up every day in this country. So, I don't know why that should make any headline. Yes, bread is, I think the big loaf is about 700 naira now. I strongly believe that before we are in this office in 2023, a loaf of bread will cost about 2,000 naira. If it doesn't, that will be very much surprise. So, so is the, the question. Mm, yeah, so the question yes, here is the issue. The government that does not even really know how to address the economy, in terms of economic security or what have you. So I don't know why that should be an issue. Bread is 700 naira today, the big flow. Very soon it will be 1,000 naira. Before the end of this year, it will be 1,500. I can assure you that. 
Then by 2003, 2023, you can have 2,000 apps and no compare. It's unfortunate, but that is the country we find ourselves. That is the kind of leadership we have. Leadership that is quite insensitive to the plight of Nigeria. Just thinking of itself, you know. And what you expect? What you, nothing good can come out of this government. Nothing good. In the last seven years, it has been, if I say it now, it's okay, wasteful. I wonder if it's a particular word, but I'm on air. It has been wasteful. So what you cannot achieve in seven years? Is it going to achieve in just one year? And the political hostages have started. The world is now we have our politics. It's no longer a common thing. That is what is going to happen. So let us just endure and pray that we are going to have a leader that will be there in the image of Nigeria, that will be responsible and responsive. All right, uh, let's move away from the punch in this paper. That's some very interesting stories. Mercy, I'm very sorry. I know you love bread. Sorry. No, I sorry. don't. <laughs> Unfortunately. Oh, you don't. Okay. <laughs> They're very interesting right. stories on the Daily Independent. Lots of them making headlines. Uh, <clears throat> inadequate revenue collection weakens Nigeria's debt profile. Another interesting one there, 2023 presidential election. Uh, let's talk about that one. Jonathan gives presidency condition to join APC. How do you reason that, Oponabo? I, I sincerely don't know, uh, Jonathan, for now, one is important as to uh, his political inclination. At the point, the air was so filled with the rumor of Jonathan defecting to the PDP that they were overtures to him. And uh, he had been silent on that, really silent on that. In fact, when the Bauchi State Governor visited him, he said something like, um, well, I'm still thinking. I'm talking about the Bauchi State Governor visited him to declare the intention, you know. So I believe right now that Jonathan still is still eyeing the president. He still wants to go back to Ashwood, but does not really know how to go about it. That is my conviction right now. And now he's giving a crazy condition. What are the conditions? Probably he wants to emerge as a consensus candidate. He doesn't want a situation where he will be biased for the primaries. And so if you say I should come and uh, be your be the presidential candidate of the party, then I don't need any other competitor. I want to be the sole candidate. I think that is the kind of arrangement they have. I'm not I can't say for fact what it is, but okay. I think that's the kind of arrangement they have. And I believe that that is a condition is also given to uh, Mr. President, because they said it's Mr. President that is actually making this over to Jonathan. Open up because they love Jonathan. No, 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 no
to score Jonathan, I'll just say 50-60%. Score Buari, 10%. Jonathan, 50-50%. So you can do the, the thinking yourself, what 50% means. It's definitely not going to be the economy. Never, it's not going to be the economy. Just 50%. Try to study the economy and be so damaged. Even while he was there, yeah, we agree. Uh, the economy was far much better than what it was now. But it would have been a lot better than it was when it was there. That's the truth about it. So if you get back to our school up, with the level of experience and so on, let's say about 50 percent and whoever will succeed it will take it to about 80, the 70, 80 percent. Of course, they can't have about it. Okay, um, um, just before we move away from um, the punch now, as we coast the conversation down, uh, it's a report from the Central Bank of Niger, that's the CBN, saying that Niger spends uh, $39.66 billion on foreign education and medical tourism. How do we get this money to remain in our country? It's simple. It's simple. Who does? Prudence in terms of fiscal management, um, wisdom. But then, for example, how do you expect, uh, if the president himself, that is to lead by example, is constantly in UK on medical issues? Well, how do you expect other members? But you have the actual House National Assembly member, you have the ministers, you have the governor, you have the uh, commissioners, you have the advisors, you have the local government chairman, and so on. So, what do you expect? That's the capital of life. In terms of education, uh, well, unless for those who have scholarship, take scholarship, so to speak, the bulk of the sum comes from private individuals. They send their kids abroad, and it goes down to back up. Why? If I was going to look at my house, to try. I remember telling my daughter, how. why did I do that? I make that got into the university with her, and still, in their third year, second year, they're about six because of How sad is that? It's not as if we never have the money. You don't know what I went to to do that. But I just had to do that. Because at the end of the day, you're frustrating the students. They're even spending more. Those that are here keep renewing their house rent. Those that are off campus, they renew the house rent. They pay for them. It's frustrating. So, in terms of education, they have to put the educational sector right. When I went to school in Nigeria, my first degree was in Nigeria. Yes, we had strikes then, because it was in the early 90s, in this case, it early 90s. We had the strikes then, but it wasn't as bad as it is right And our uh, leaders are not bothered at all, because they have the money, even if it's uh, 100,000 naira to a dollar, they will pay. They have it. Even if it's 500,000 naira to a dollar, all they do is increase on their skills. Stealing skill. It's as simple as that. If they are still with red viral, the team with green viral now. If the green viral fails, the team with brown viral. If it fails, the team with blue gold viral. It's as simple as that. So they are not bothered. So they are not interested in the educational system. Otherwise, what does it take to address the issues that ASU has, has to have raised? Nothing. We are talking of ASU, you are giving how many millions of dollars to, is it Afghanistan or whatever country? That, that is ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. But no, I say you don't have the money to address the actual challenge. That's completely unacceptable. What about, it was the first lady who said that they, they don't even have nails in actual uh, 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 hospital clinic. And every year, money is budget. What are they doing with the money? It's going down to corruption. And at the end of the day, the boss comes at the president's table. He looks the other way. Why they, why, why, why they feel the trend is right? He cannot absorb it. The people say the man is not corrupt. His maintenance are corrupt. If the head is rotten, the body will be rotten. He takes the credit. If the economy is good, he takes the credit. If it's bad, he takes the blame. So he cannot extricate himself or whatever it is. So it boils down to synapses. It boils down to bad leaders. We must put our health sector right. We must put our digital sector right. And to a very large extent, that will reduce the tourism we are talking about. All right, open up. Well, let's uh, get slide to the nation newspaper. Now, this issue of zoning, it's still resounding. Uh, the way it's captioned here, Southeast OK zoning of PDP ticket to the South. Uh, what are your thoughts, really, uh, open up? I don't understand when it's the Southeast. Is it to the South, South? Is it to the South, South? I, I feel that. 
because you still have the a lot of people from the south is contested. I I want the I don't know the PDP if that's a statement from the PDP or if it's a conjecture. But the South is is black or that it is strong. And rightly too. Because from nineteen ninety nine to date, it is just one zone that has not produced the president. So rightly too. But I don't know if it will be fed to the South South. I I strongly doubt that. But let's watch and see. I don't really have the facts and I will not want to pontificate on that. All right, then. Uh, we still go back to the Punch newspaper, and that's because uh, uh, there's a lot of interesting head headlines this morning on the Punch. Uh, he says state government sinks deeper as NMPC plans 328 billion naira deductions in April. Uh, there's a lot of. I didn't get that. I didn't get that. So I'll take that again. Uh, he says state government sink deeper as NMPC plans. 328 billion naira deductions in April. <laughs> you know, we have states that do not generate funds. They depend on uh, federal allocation. And this federal allocation definitely the government will come from NNPC. And so when NNPC deducts this money, it affects their revenue. So a lot of states might not even be able to pay salaries. A lot of them are capital projects because most of them, even if you give them a billion naira a month, all they will do is have bank bank accounts and do nothing. I don't want to mention the states anyway. But the truth about it is that they are worried. And they are worried because the IGR in most states is laughable. Not because it cannot be increased. It can, but just here in very next year, you know, in Dole, the governors are not bothered. At the end of the day, they are going to get, at the end of the month, they are going to get money from the federal government, and that is enough. They don't even pay salaries. There is no development so far in their state. So, if NNPC, for example, the state gets about $2 billion every month, and NNPC decides to make such huge deductions, that state might get about $500 million. So, that is just enough for the government to steal. Not enough to pay another that program. Just for the government to steal. That's all. And that's why they are worried. Well, um, I'm, I'm, so I'm hoping that, uh, you know, with this kind of narrative, I mean, the same way we still have been operating, couldn't we have considered this, uh, you know, during the constitutional review? Shouldn't this have been a case that should have been proposed, uh, talking about the amendment of the constitution? So, you know, some states yeah. can be allowed to um, harness their natural resources in their state and also generate well, well, revenue without having to be dependent, you know, on the revenue that accrues from, you know, oil. I agree with you, uh, Messi. I complete, completely agree with you. It's actually uh, a, a principle in the presidential system of government where you have uh, again, the center paper system. What you operate right now is the center paper system from top to bottom. That is that is wrong. It has to be from bottom to top, you know. And that is what a lot of us clamor for. And we've been that we've been clamoring for for years. I remember as far back as um, uh, 2002, 2003, uh, on Kakati sister station, for close to about four or five years. You know, I, it was one major issue we carried on our head. The president of the South South. But then the federal government will not agree. Well, we are actually practicing presidential system of government. We are not. We are practicing quasi presidential system of government. Because the presidential units have to be partially autonomous. And they have to control their resources and pay money taxes to the center. That is how it is done anywhere in the world. That is the acceptable standard. But yeah, no. And that is because the constitution was handed over to us by the military, the dictator. And that mindset, that thinking, you know, if you remember this Manjus decree, it was done by, uh, I guess, by this, um, the former president of Africa, when he was a military head of state. So we inherited most of this law. Unfortunately, our legislators, I don't know why they have failed to address this issue. But you know why they will not address the issue? I will tell you. Because right now, the nation depends on oil. And the oil comes from the south south. And the numerical strength belongs to the north. The knowledge is a major beneficiary of this oil. 
revenue. So there will definitely kick against it. We don't have the numerical stress, even though that so called numerical is fraudulent. I doubt it. But we don't have the, because you go to both parts in the north, you have one tree here, yeah? you have one house here, yeah? the next house is 100 miles away, and all the palm flowers are the trees and branches. But let's leave that for another day. So I doubt the, the, the numerical stress. But based on that, because the allocation of power is also based premise on part, partly premise on it. So they will not agree. Otherwise, we ought to control our resources and pay taxes to the extent that that is how it is done, even in the United States of America, which is the natural place of modern day presidential system of government or democracy. All right, Chapuna, but before we let you go, let's uh, um, talk about um, the invasion that happened over the weekend uh, in Kaduna. Uh, Daily Independent has a story on that uh, uh, with a caption, Kaduna Airport attack, federal government has uh, conceded sovereignty to terrorists. That's according to the PDP. Uh, they are alleging that Buhari is fiddling while Nigeria burns. What are your thoughts generally concerning that particular attack at the Kaduna Airport and um, how do you really think that could Our actually be restored? It's a sad development. Our president is on a long sojourn. And the last time he was in the land of order and indiscretion. I can tell you the man is not bothered. He's tired. He's not even impressed. We've been treating these criminals with kid gloves. For them, for us to even be there, for this uh, book or terrorist or whatever, it took how many years? This is Mr. One President, even before he was the president, that said Boko Haram was to be given uh, amnesty. They've been granted amnesty, a lot of them. They said they've adjusted their sins and penitentiary have put the government, especially in Bruno State. And most of them were granted amnesty. And I said to people, the employees would have worked out of arms and ammunition, funds and so on. And so they want to come back into the society to get more funds and also initiate it. It's a sad development. The federal government, I must be honest with you, in terms of terrorism, the federal government has failed woefully. And not because it doesn't know what to do. Okay, look at Good Burakai, for example. The present service chiefs said they cannot find the answer that William Burakai said he bought. They said so. The National Security Advisor confirmed the corroboration that school. What happened? Buhari congratulated him for a job badly done by appointing him an, an ambassador, insulating him from any form of persecution. How do you expect such a government to fight corruption sincerely? It's not possible. It's not possible. They are treating people with kids because they are from the north and the man is from the north. It's as simple as that. But I want a general. He is fully, he was going to end terrorism within six months. We are talking of seven years. What has happened? Nothing. So I, the problem is with, the, with Mr. President. Don't blame the serving chief. What are you going to blame them for? It is one thing that if, for example, Burakai and his wife had been punished, it would have started as a disaster. If you don't have that, this Buddha Thai time was a complete disaster. The federal service chiefs are even better. That time was a complete disaster. And they are rewarded with a particular appointment. What a shame. We are going to continue to have this problem until this man is up. Then I think a new president who is sincere, who wants to be there, who is going to be in the image of Nigeria, who, who will host to protect life and property sincerely, will come and address this issue. I don't think President Buhari will forever contain this. All right. all right, thank you so much, um, Oponabo in Kotaria, for you. your time and indeed all of um, the input you have brought um, to those stories that we analyzed on the front um, pages. Oponabo in Kotaria is a public affairs analyst and he joined us live from Abuja. We do appreciate your time. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. morning. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Oponabo, for being part of the show. We appreciate it. All right, uh, we'll, take, uh, we'll take a break from that. Uh, we'll go back um, this day in history and see what happened. And when we come back, we'll be doing our first um, set of conversations. Um, stay with us.